Hello everyone, this is Alan from Technology Moments. Thanks for watching our videos as usual. Today we're sharing with you the experience that we had with this 5G based T networking card, which means 5 gigabit per second of our twisted pair cable. We have tested before 10 gigabit per second networking adapters, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, which of course is more common. We have even tested 25 gigabit per second networking adapters with SFP28 fiber optic modules. But what about 5 gigabit per second? Let's see how it works and what advantages you might have when implementing this standard. For this, we're going to use and share the experience that we had with this, the Wavlink 5 gigabit per second PCI Express networking adapter, compatible with all PCI Express ports and the most important operating systems. For those of you who may be new to this standard, put simply, it is five times as fast as the most common networking speed of one gigabit Ethernet. So if you team up this networking adapter with the correct hardware, you might get rid of undesired bottlenecks. First consideration here, it is not actually like you're gonna get a 5 gigabit per second switch. Don't even look for it. You would have to go for a 2.5 gigabit per second switch and limit the card to that speed, or a 10 gigabit per second switch and set it to negotiating speed to 5 gigabit per second. Both are great options. Hardware available for both Ethernet standards, 2.5 GBase-T and 10 GBase-T are very common today, however 10 GBase-T remains very expensive. Not so much anymore if you go for 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Also, if you have a bigger network infrastructure where you have a server, 5 gigabit per second can be very useful for backups, virtual servers, and more. Direct linking from one server to another one using these cards and not using any switch is another great alternative. Installing this card is very simple. However, you must stick to the traditional method of connecting the card powering up your computer and installing the driver of your particular operating system. It is included in the memory, you will find all the drivers that you need, or you can choose to download the most recent versions of them. Once you run the installation, the hardware is gonna be properly installed and it'll appear in your device manager and it'll be ready to use. Something that is very important is that in the advanced menu of the driver properties in the device manager, you will find all the options that you might want to check when using in your particular networking scenario. For example, Jumbo Frames, Wake on LAN, PXE Boot, VLANs, Link Speed and more. For instance, at the beginning, Link Speed is the one that you're gonna wanna check. For example, not all switches that I have negotiate at five gigabit per second. So you might want to check both the driver settings for speed negotiation and the switch configuration for such parameter too. For example, in my case, I had to limit to 2.5 gigabit per second as my switch is not capable of 5 gigabit per second Ethernet networking. However, I was able to link at 5 gigabit per second using this 10 gigabit per second networking adapter. Once we set our switch to the correct negotiating speed and also the driver at the advanced tab, we're gonna get the link up to the speeds that we choose. For those of you, again, new to these standards, remember that you need to have compatible hardware across the network to get the speed that you want. As you can see right here, all networking components between the network source and the destination need to have at least the minimum speed that you require. Let's also remember that 5 gigabit per second is also going to be above what a lot of hardware may be able to maintain as reading or writing speeds. But if you're searching for 5 gigabit per second, you already may know that. You might be able to install it, for example, in specific hardware due to the compatibility of the PCI Express port, but the rest of the hardware may not be up to the power data transfer needs for these cards. So that is something to consider. Of course, if you're looking for a 5 gigabit per second Ethernet over copper card like this one, you can transfer very fast between your hard drives, but you also need to do that among your network. Just take a look at how fast 5 gigabit per second Ethernet would be able to transfer huge files like these to your destination server. As of wiring needed, our recommendation is of course to use for 5 gigabit per second links a category 6 cable. Cabling is usually what people tend to underestimate the most as a critical component of your network. Will you be able to get speeds of 5 gigabit per second with a CAT 5E cable? Yes, you will. Just as, for example, you will be able to extend beyond 120 or 130 meter for gigabit Ethernet. We've done it before and it's worked great, only that it is outside networking standard parameters. However, such cable length will be well below the Ethernet standard and will also depend on the quality of such cable for 5 gigabit per second. Much better would be using category 7 cabling, but let's get real. 
Not all companies, small offices and buildings have such cabling available. Overall, we liked very much this networking card. It is very reliable. It continues to be a great alternative to higher speed networking and also for advanced users, networking administrators, regional operation centers and more where fast data transfer for replication, data backups and synchronization takes place. We do it in our hardware and it is a must. Ok guys, hope this video was as informative as it was intended. Remember that your kind subscription to our channel and hitting the like button is your great support. See you next time.